Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 14 to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in this TV show really are. <laughs> Ginro is just a little kid. If if you give him like caffeine, it, it I mean Senku's like absolutely right. He will go nuts. They will crazy with energy. Those of you who have taken like any biology class, I'm sure you've heard of ATP, which is the building blocks of energy. Adenosine triphosphate. For the caffeine like explanation, we're gonna go with only the first part of that, A for adenosine. Adenosine is responsible for calming your body down, and it does this using these four receptors, A1, A2A, A2B, and A3. A1 and A2A are cardiovascular inhibitors. What they do is they lower your blood pressure and decrease your heart rate. And th these also, these are the same receptors that are responsible for telling your body when it's time to go to sleep. Caffeine molecules will attach to these receptors instead of the adenosine and what they do is they pretty much block the adenosine from being processed and if you block the thing that's telling your body to calm down you get riled up like the, the, the whole point of the adenosine is to like you know put your body like regulate your body so that your heart rate doesn't go out of control so your blood pressure stays in check but if you remove that barrier then your heart rate really increases and your blood pressure goes up as well and your blood just starts like you just feel like you have all this energy because like you remove the barrier that calms you down. So right now when it shows Ginro just going crazy doing this thing and like just jumping everywhere and like using like he is really really feeling all of that energy until the caffeine wears off. <laughs> Jeez, uh, that, so that is very, very likely to happen after you have, I mean, if this is his first time ever having caffeine, this will for sure happen. Remember, caffeine increases blood flow to all different parts of your body, which include your kidneys and your intestines. So when you're adenosine that tells your body like not to speed up everything, right? Like all those all those inhibitions that tell your body to like calm down are done. So your digestive processes are also speeding up as well. And that's why if you drink enough coffee or have enough caffeine, it feels like you really have to poop or you gotta take a piss because those inhibitors are all gone. What most people will also experience when they have like a lot of caffeine is just the crash that comes afterwards. Because for, for you to continue feeling the effect of the caffeine, you need to keep on drinking the coffee or the energy drink or like whatever it is you're getting your caffeine from. And the moment you stop doing that, your adenosine starts to act as it normally does. The whole time you are drinking caffeine, your body is still producing the adenosine for the adenosine triphosphate, but it's just not being processed. So now you have all like this really high density of adenosine molecules waiting to be processed by these receptors, but they haven't been because the caffeine has been attached to them instead. So when the caffeine has been processed and like pretty much pushed out of your body, you have all of these high abundance of adenosine molecules all of them will be processed and all of them are telling you to slow your heart rate down, decrease your blood pressure, and go to sleep. The most efficient way to keep like that caffeine in your system is to slowly take sips of coffee. Like you don't want to drink it all at once because if you do, all the effects will be amplified that much more. Like you're going to feel a very high amount of energy for like an extended period of time but it's going to be like a spike of energy and it's going to drop down very very quickly what you would optimally want to get the best, most out of the caffeine is to take slow sips of it so that throughout the day it's not like going crazy you have an increase in your energy and it's just like slowly like going off until you leave your job or whatever you're done it'll slowly come back down <laughs> Senku is absolutely 100% correct about what's going to happen to this dude. He's about to get wrecked by magma and 
the reason for that is especially this like when like the prescription lenses that I'm wearing right now for example they're all concave lenses and the reason that you want to wear concave lenses for prescription purposes is because you want the light to scatter because that'll give you a larger field of view or a, like, like a wider field of view whereas in a magnifying glass you're concentrating all the light into one focal point so it, like you're pretty much zooming in on an object whereas you don't want that same effect with your prescription lenses because then you won't be able to like see as much around you you only gonna be able to see like two individual points or, or one for that matter the downside to having concave lenses is that your resolution of the image that you're seeing when you look through them won't be as high as a magnifying glass but the downside to a magnifying glass is that you can only see in a very small cross-sectional area burning something with your prescription lenses or concave lenses is possible but it's very very unlikely to happen because it like what you're doing is you're scattering the light so it's not like you you, you don't have a high buildup of heat anywhere you have like a low um low level of heat in a wider area whereas in a convex lens like a magnifying glass you're focusing all of the light in one small cross-sectional area so you have a very small point that has all the heat like in that one point obviously chrome doesn't have the time to just be like standing there still waiting for the because if it was a concave lens it would take i mean you would have to have some really great sunlight and you would be sitting there for hours whereas for a magnifying glass it would take you no more than one second Thank goodness for that too, right? Like, could you imagine if everyone who had like prescription lenses was walking around with the magnifying glasses on their face? Like, wh wherever we would look at somebody, we would just burn them. <laughs> like, like, it, like, it's a really good thing that that's not the case. That will work but I mean that that's crazy but that would work what I thought he was gonna do was just flip the lens over so he says a convex lens becomes a concave lens or vice versa and that that is not possible by the way so I'm very glad that the show did not do that if you had to pick a liquid to do this with water is your best choice because water has special properties of cohesion and adhesion that allow it to behave like this the adhesion properties of water will allow it to stick to really whatever surface you put the water on. And the cohesive properties of water will allow it to stick to other water molecules. Like water really likes to stick to other water molecules. And you can test this at home actually if you just have like a penny and you have a little like dropper. You can just like count how many drops build up on the penny and you'll see that the water, like the more drops you put, it actually will start to curve upwards the more drops you put on the penny. And it's the exact same principle that he's doing right here. To transform like one convex lens into a con, or rather a concave lens into a convex lens, you have to build up enough of the water drops so that there's like an upward curve on the top of the lens so that light can go through it. You gotta really hold your arm very, very steady. Otherwise this will fall apart very quickly. And the reason for that is because you're working with a, a liquid, right? It's water's not a solid. and if you were if your arm was to twitch and it'll cause the water to like sway back and forth and it'll cause like the light that goes through that water like you you'll keep on moving the focal point and what you want is to keep it in one location for just a few seconds that's all it takes for the convex lens to actually build up like a fire with the sun <laughs> I don't have the slightest clue what equations he was using, nor do I want to go through and check all that work. I and I mean, for one, I'm not sure the process of like, because like, I've only ever worked with magnifying glasses that are already convex lenses. I, I don't know if like the effect of because like your sweat is mostly salt water. Like, I don't know if that plays an effect at all, but if you have, like, a bunch of salt water just, like, over a concave lens and that becomes a convex lens, I mean, I don't know how he's doing all that math in his head, but let's just go with it and trust Senko on this one.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found some value in it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Dr. Stone, put that in the comments below or any other movie or TV show you want me to commentate over. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.